Hi, I'm Ken Weinstein, CEO of Hudson Institute, and I'm here today to talk about Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's inaugural trip to Japan. Looking at the trip, I think we can say that Hillary Clinton's trip to Tokyo was a very big success for American foreign policy. To begin with, the Secretary of State had to reassure the Japanese on two very different fronts that they remain a vital U.S. partner. When Secretary of State Clinton was running for president, she published a major piece on foreign policy in the journal Foreign Affairs in which she talked about the U.S.-China relationship as being the most critical bilateral relationship for our nation. This article was taken with some offense in Tokyo as a sign that U.S.-Japan relations would be less important were she to be elected president. By stating very clearly and very publicly in Tokyo that U.S.-Japan relations were a cornerstone of American foreign policy, she has shown, and by stopping first in Tokyo rather than Beijing, Secretary Clinton has shown that Japan will re retain uh, the upper hand as the critical bilateral relationship in Asia for some time to come. Secondly, uh, Secretary Clinton also had to backtrack on some of the problems created by the Bush administration in U.S.-Japan relations. One should recall that U.S.-Japan relations were extraordinarily close throughout the premiership of uh, Prime Minister Koizumi in Tokyo, who worked very closely with President Bush, particularly on Iraq, but also on facing the North Korea threat. But in the second Bush term, as North Korea policy was, as it were, delegated to the State Department and in particular to Assistant Secretary of State Christopher Hill, who used the six-party talks, which were an attempt to get North Korea uh, to renounce any desire to have nuclear capacity. These six-party talks moved from being genuine six-party multilateral talks to being increasingly a bilateral U.S.-North Korean relationship. Uh, a bilateral U.S.-North Korea discussion with some significant Chinese input, and Japan and the Japanese concerns were really left to the side. Nowhere was this more critical than the, on the absolutely essential issue of the abductees, the Japanese abductees, Jap Japanese citizens who were kidnapped in Japan by North Korean agents and who have been left for dead, essentially, or claimed to be dead by the North Korean government. When President Bush met with the families of the Japanese abductees in the Oval Office, he sent a very clear message, and he was very emotionally moved. He was moved to tears by the stories of these people who missed their children. Uh, he felt their emotional pain, and it was a clear signal to the Japanese that this was a Western leader who understood, uh, as it were, uh, the Japanese psyche. And so the, the President seemed to have been saying at that point that the abductee issue would be a critical issue, but later on this issue, he paid less and less attention to it, and, it, it, and frankly, some of his attempts to improve U.S.-North Korean relations uh, baffled the Japanese as the abductee issue was left to the side and forgotten by U.S. diplomats. Secretary of State Clinton's meeting with the leaders of the organizations uh, pushing for uh, a release of these abductees and with abductee families was a very strong signal once again, that the U.S. is deeply concerned about the human rights of these abductees, and that this is going to, again, be a critical issue in U.S.-North Korean relations. So in short, I believe Secretary Clinton's trip is off to a strong start. There are obviously critical areas the U.S. and Japan need to work together on economic recovery, on fighting uh, pollution, particularly c coming from China, and on these issues, the meetings have been relatively successful as well. So Secretary Clinton's first foreign trip with a stopover in Tokyo seems to be headed in the right direction. Hopefully, we'll continue to see positive signs as the trip takes her to China and then to Indonesia. Thank you very much.